Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have another episode of This Year in Perfume. And we're going to go on to the year 1982. Now that we've kind of hit the 80s and we're really going in stride, we're in my home court here. This is uh, some of the fragrances that I feel most comfortable with, that I love. However, 82 um, happens to be a thin year. I only have three fragrances. Um, there are some other fragrances uh, that I don't have that I wish I had that I could share with you. Um, but before we get into that, let's talk about some history here. Um, let's talk about what was going on in the 80s. So just to give you an example of, um, for people like me, I'm, I'm an 85 baby, so I wasn't alive during 1982. Uh, but um, the, the most uh, popular song, for example, you had things like uh, Eye of the Tiger, uh, you had Joan Jett and the Black Hearts, I Love Rock and Roll. You had Hungry Like a Wolf from Duran Duran. Okay, so you're, you're kind of getting, you're getting the picture here. Um, I wish we could go back to those times, to be honest with you. And as far as movies go, E.T., the extraterrestrial knocked it out of the park, I believe. That was the best-selling box office movie that was released in 82. I think also maybe Rocky Three came out in 82, if I'm not mistaken, but I don't have that pulled up, so don't quote me on that. Um, but I think it was, uh, I think E.T. easily ran away with the uh, top prize there. Um, let me just give you a couple of scents that are not in this list for the big time frag heads going back to 82. So some of the things that I'm missing, um, I don't have Arrogance Pour Homme. I would love to get Arrogance Pour Homme, but uh, for some reason it's hard to find. And the ones that you find, they seem, you know, a little shady almost. I'm not, there must not have been a very big supply of Arrogance Pour Homme. Uh, I, I have Arrogance Womo, but that was a couple years later. Uh, there was also a fragrance from Dior called Eau Sauvage Extreme, which I've never smelled. Um, you know, they were on a, some of these houses were kind of on an extreme kick in the early 80s. I think um, YSL did the same thing with YSL Perome. They did this hot concentre, they called it. Same idea. Um, and there were some L'Artisan perfumer scents starting to hit the scene already in the in 1982. One of the earliest true niche houses. Um, so, you know, I've got the big, the three big hitters, we'll say, for men. I don't have any women fragrances from this. There is a fragrance from Lagerfeld called KL. I have KL Home, which came a couple years later. Um, but KL for women, I don't have. Armani Parfum for women, I don't have. Trussardi Donna for women, I don't have. Um, Armani I mentioned so you know there 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 were some scents that uh, now that I'm kind of digging into the women's portfolio I think I would really love to try to get my nose on and see especially that Lagerfeld but uh, as of right now I'm fresh out so let's start with my scent of the day and today we're going with a you know what let me get my microfiber cloth I don't want any tickets for fingerprints here so this is L'Instante Guerlain, this is O Extreme. Whoops, that was upside down, or was it? No, it wasn't, that was correct. There you go. Uh, see how it says O Extreme right there? So this is basically the EDP, the exact same thing as the black rimmed bottle, which I paid big money for. I wish I hadn't, I wish I would just, just went and bought the current EDP because Guerlain loves changing bottles around. You know, I bought this years ago before I really realized that kind of changing bottles and renaming things was Guerlain's thing. I don't think there's very much difference between this. Now, obviously, I like the bottle better. There's actually a Creed release for women that they put into a new bottle I've never seen Creed's put into before. It must be a Black Rocks influence that looks very similar to this bottle. Very similar. Uh, they put a, a fancier cap and like a bow tie on it, and I guess now they can charge 500 bucks for it. But um, L'Instant de Guerlain, one of my favorite patchouli scents. This came out in 2005. It was released by Beatrice Piquet, who is unfortunately no longer with us. May she rest in peace. And um, I will tell you, this fragrance really blew me away the first time I smelled it because I didn't understand what I was smelling. 
It was very hard for somebody who didn't have a whole lot of experience to wrap their head around a complex fragrance like this. And so when I first smelled it, I knew it was something special. And I knew I loved it, but I didn't really understand the inner workings of the scent. And now that um, I'm a little bit more experienced and my nose has matured, I, um, here, let me give this a fresh spray because I love this fragrance. Um, there's this beautiful star anise that mixes with citruses in the opening. And, you know, if you think about some of the old school patchouli scents, like from decades gone past, I was, I was telling Rich Mitch today that, you know, if Balenciaga Pour Homme was the patchouli of the early 90s and Amen was the patchouli of the late 90s, this is the patchouli of the 2000s to me. This is the quintessential masculine patchouli of the 2000s. It's so good. It has this cacao note um, that mixes with the patchouli. There's a very comforting tea note as well. If I ever do a top tea fragrances, this will make the list. And you know what's funny is not a lot of people think of this as a tea scent. It just doesn't come to mind. You know, you, you think of the patchouli and you think of the cacao, but you don't really think of the tea. It's so good. There's this um, hibiscus flower, hibiscus seed uh, note as well. There's cedar. Um, there's also this, uh, I want to say like frankincense, almost like this oily frankincense feel to it. I don't think there's any olibanum or frankincense in this fragrance. But it's almost like there, there's there's... Maybe a touch, or it's not listed, I should say, because the stars of the star of this fragrance, uh, the highlights are the star anise, the cacao, and the patchouli. Those are the big three. And obviously, you get the citruses in the top, and then you get the tea later on. That kind of just gives off this very comforting feel. It's a very, to me, this is a very comforting fragrance, but it's also a very confident and very masculine fragrance at the same time. I love this fragrance. Love. I'm I have a backup bottle too with the black rim around the uh around the outside. But um one thing that just gets me is this feel of frankincense and not burned smoke frankincense, but you know, oily, um almost piney like un unburnt, if you will. If you ever smelled like frankincense, which I have some from Oman that has never been burned and and it still has a smell you get a little bit of that underneath, even though it's not listed. It's so good. Such a great fragrance. If you've never tried L'Instante Guerlain and you're starting to get into patchoulis, this is an absolute must, in my opinion. I love this presentation. I'm, I'm sad that they Guerlain put this in the regular Listerine bottle because this presentation is just perfect to me. Um... The only thing is it doesn't sit very well if you put it on like a table. This is a very small bot bottom. You know, it's easy to kind of tip, but um, it's a gorgeous flacon. I love this bottle. Okay, let's get into the year 1982. Let's start with the big hitter. There's one hitter that came out in 82 that kind of overshadowed all others as far as sales go. And that is... Dracar Noir. Um, this, luckily, is a Cosmere version. However, I have something I want to talk about with this fragrance. And um, this was a Pierre War uh, Wargnai. I believe that's how you say his name. If that's not correct, please forgive me. But it's Pierre Wargnai, I believe, uh, who created this in 82. I love his fragrances. He has some hitters. He'll definitely be in my perfumers portfolio video one day. Um, one thing I should mention about this, there's an article on this too in, in, on Raiders of the Lost Ark, which you've never heard, if you've never heard of the website Raiders of the Lost Ark, they are a fantastic website, or Ra Ra Raiders of the Lost Ark, Jesus, Raiders of the Lost Scent, Raiders of the Lost Ark was a movie, um, Raiders of the Lost Scent is the website, um, so if you go to Raiders of the Lost Scent, it's a, it's a blog, and they talk about this fragrance, and they talk about a couple important things. Well, first, they talk about the actual chemical substance that made this fragrance what it is, uh, and that is the use of uh, dihydro, 
Mersinol, which also ended up being used in cool water effectively in 88 by Pierre Bourdon, but he used it completely different than what Dracar Noir did. Um, and what's interesting is if you can find a first version of this, which is rare nowadays and probably extremely expensive, but, and by the way, I should mention this is a flanker. This is a flanker of a uh, fragrance called Drakkar, uh, which was a huge flop for the brand. It didn't do very well. Uh, and so they put out this flanker, and it was the flanker that completely took off. No one talks about Drakkar, the original fragrance, although someone did comment in my uh, YouTube comments on one of the videos and say that um, Drakkar is a fantastic scent that I should definitely check it out, which I've never smelled it before. So, uh, and it's very, very hard to find. But if you've never smelled dihydromersinol, it basically has this laundry detergent musk type feel to it, okay? Um, and it was very popular in the 1980s because it gives off this cleanliness. It gives off this clean uh, vibe. And I've said it before, the most important thing to a woman when they smell fragrance on a man is that he smells clean. Women don't like men to smell dirty. Um, and so, you know, this laundry detergent cleanliness turned out to be a big hit in the 1980s. And I love this fragrance, by the way. Uh, the Cosmere version lasts a little bit longer than the current version. I don't know who owns Dracar, who owns Guy La Roche right now, uh, off the top of my head. But uh, whoever, whoever the big company is that owns Guy La Roche has reformulated the new stuff and it doesn't last as long, but it's still a good take on it because dihydromersinol is not um, limited in any ways. Um, it's not like oak moss or, you know, there is oak moss in this, by the way. So there, there is oak moss that is turned up in this a little bit more, but they talk about something on Raiders of the Lost Scent, which not a lot of people talk about. And I want to give it some I want to give it some love, uh, and that is the um, that is the fact that the original release had patchouli in it. Okay, so if you look uh, on Raiders of the Lost Scent, you can see that um, they they go through all the different versions and the way to tell, and you know what the copyright says and all that stuff. But if you can find a um, if you can find a first formulation that had patchouli in it. They ended up taking out the patchouli because they said it's consider it was considered too much of a 1970s vibe. Okay, so once they took that patchouli out, the second version, if you will, which is considered to be the first reformulation, has this fresh woody clean scent. And that's what this is. It's a fresh woody clean scent. I wear this in the summer. This is not a winter scent for me. This is a summer scent. And... That first version I would love to smell. I've never smelled it before, um, but I will say if you can find an original uh, first version that says copyright 1980, I believe it says copyright 1981, although this is, a, this is in my 82 video for one big reason, and that's because uh, Parfumo.net, which I'm going off of, if you've been watching my this year in perfume videos, you know that Parfumo.net is my source that I've decided to go with, and I'm sticking with them. So even though there's a copyright of 81 listed, and even though um, Raiders of the Lost Scent says 1981, I'm putting this in my 82 video because that's what Parfumo.net says, so I'm sticking with them. Some are conflicting with Fragrantica, some are the same, you know, so you're going to get some differences, but... We're putting this in 1982, but the point of going to the Raiders of the Lost Scent blog and talking about that was the fact that they talked about a very important ingredient that was taken out. So all of the later reformulations are all basically, you know, the same uh, vibe without the patchouli. Only the first one had that patchouli in it, which I would love to smell. But if you've never smelled uh, Dracar Noir, just to give you some of the notes, it's basically this... Old school lavender with citrus and mint, uh, and then you get this, you get this real green feel in, in the mid and the dry down because there's wormwood. There's basically all the green notes that you can think of. There's wormwood. There's 
uh, Artemisia, there's Angelica, there's Balsam Furs, and there's Pine Needles. And Fragrantica says patchouli, but again, according to Raiders of the Lost Scent, unless you have a first version, there is no patchouli in this scent anymore. It's been taken out, okay? Oak Moss and Leather. Very 1980s. Um, I love wearing this fragrance uh, because I feel like it really makes you stand out from the crowd. Not a lot of people wear this, even though it's a cheapie, because they think it's cheap. They think because it doesn't cost very much money that it's not a good fragrance, and that's not the case at all. I love the lavender in this. Um, there's just there's just so much there's so much good going on in this fragrance. The Cosmere version, if you can get it, has a little bit more oomph to it. It's a little bit thicker because it does have the oak moss turned up a bit, and it hasn't been reformulated and watered down and made to be cheaper yet, kind of thing. Um, and it lasts longer. Okay, so that's the biggest difference, but. If you find a new bottle of this for 20, 25 bucks, you can just spray away and then go get a new one. You know, it's, 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 don't pay hundreds of dollars for a Cosmere version. Let me put it that way. Um, but I am, I am very glad to have this. This is a hundred ml bottle. Uh, and, and the, the bottle is very classic. You know, I like these bottles that actually are, you can't see through, even though everyone likes to see the juice. If you put it up to the light, I think you can kind of see where it's at. But um, the reason that I like these is it doesn't let light through. So sunlight won't come in and destroy the fragrance like with a fragrance where, it, you know, the sunlight can get right through and, and, and touch the fragrance. So I actually like these bottles that are, um, that are opaque like this where you can't, where you can't see through. Uh, so Dracar Noir is the first one in 1982. Uh, and again, I'm going off of Parfumo, so don't crucify me. Fragrantica says 1981. Uh, actually, Fragrantica does say 82 as well, so both of them say 82, but Raiders of the Lost Scent say it was created in 81. Okay, so now we're going to go on to, uh, Corum, and Corum is the most 80s name and bottle I've ever seen. Look at this bottle. Look how 80s this looks. It has this dirty green bottle with this brown and gold cap. You know, the cap obviously weighs nothing, uh, but just the color scheme, look at that, with the gold atomizer. Now, this is a vintage bottle because the name of the house, Antonio Puig, is down here below. The newer bottles will not say Antonio Puig down below, or Puig, however you want to say it. Uh, if, if you can find an older bottle like this, get it, because this is an oak moss bomb. It was meant to be an oak moss bomb. Um, and if you're buying the newer stuff, you know, you're getting the oak moss that's really turned down. This is one of the heaviest oak moss fragrances that you can find. It basically has this green artemisia with some citruses and some spices. You get this, you get almost this, um, almost this like coriander cumin thing going on. And then there are some florals in this, but I don't think anyone's going to smell this and go, this is a floral fragrance because I, you know, there's, it's listed as having cyclamen, carnation, and jasmine. Maybe to the best trained nose in the world, you could go, okay, I'm picking out jasmine in this. But to me, the florals all play a background to the, um, to the, to the moss, to the tobacco, um, there's also, there is frankincense in this, and again, it doesn't come across as the, I've just burned a piece of wood and put it out and, you know, watch the black smoke rise. No, this kind of comes off as that oily frankincense underneath. That was the style back then. That unburnt, piney frankincense, if you will. And this also has a pine feel to it. Even though there's no pine listed in the notes, this has a pine feel to it. Um, but it's very 80s. Um, you know, this is, um, this is the epitome of 1980s perfumery for men right here. It also has a tobacco note, by the way, a, a very well done tobacco note that you get in the dry down. Uh, it lasts forever. It's take no prisoners, no holds barred. Um, 
it's it's so good. You know, I love these old school fragrances that just that just these fragrances they just don't give a damn. You know, they just come out and and you know this was the style of the early '80s. Koros definitely didn't give a damn, and Teus was a little bit more refined. Some people sm say that this smells old manish or that it smells uh, old manish is the only way to is the only way to put it. I don't get that at all because I don't associate a smell with an with a with an old man necessarily. An old man wearing this today was a young man wearing it back in the day and you know styles come around in cycles. You've noticed that um some of these new houses like for example Dior when they did the new, um, excuse me, when they did the new um, Sauvage Elixir, they, they made it almost like in an old school Fougere style with big dose of lavender. And that was what was popular back then. Uh, there's a big dose of lavender in this. Uh, and so, you know, it, it, it's coming back in style now. So I have no problem wearing this at all. Even though it might seem outdated to some, to me, I just think it's, you know, if you if you're a fan of the powerhouses from that day, like I am, this is definitely one to um, to put on the list and try. And then we're gonna go to um, a real interesting scent. I believe the 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 uh, insignia in this stands for the JHL stands for Joseph Harold Louder, if I'm not mistaken. This is JHL by Aramis. And this is a vintage. I'll show you the bottom here. This is a vintage. So you can see right there. They don't make this bottle anymore. It now comes in the standard. Actually, they could have done away with the whole gentleman's collection or whatever they called it. Um, oh, wow. It's so powerful. It is... Um, Basically what this is, so the story with this, in a nutshell, goes like this. Joseph Harold Lauder loved wearing fragrances like Cinnabar and Opium and those kind of Orientals. Youth do even, but there weren't any fragrances that were like that for men at the time. So, Estee Lauder created this for him. This was his signature scent. Um, this was created for... Joseph Harold Louder, okay? And basically what it is, is it's this beautiful oriental. There's a lovely vanilla note, okay? It's got this pimento citrus thing going on in the top with beautiful aldehydes. Some of the best aldehydes I've ever smelled, seriously. And um, Aramis somehow has this aldehydic thing going on at the top of their fragrances that, you know, a lot of times aldehydes I kind of struggle with. But the way that they're done in Aramis fragrances are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, there's clove, there's a big clove note. So just like if you take opium and you get that clove cinnamon thing going on, um, this has the same thing. It's got that clove, it's got that cinnamon. This has a beautiful rose note in it as well. It's a little bit floral underneath, but it's all about the oriental vibe. This is all about the cinnamon uh, and vanilla and labdanum, it's resinous, there's a big dose of patchouli, and, you know, woodiness, there's some sandalwood. <sighs> absolutely gorgeous. Um, absolutely gorgeous fragrance that um, I honestly don't know about the new formulation because I've never had it. Everything I have ever had was a vintage. Before I had this one, I had a mini of this exact same bottle. So I've never smelled the new stuff. I hear it has changed a little bit, um, but I can't really speak to it. It also feels like maybe there's a little bit of civet or castorium. It feels like there's something dirty underneath that oriental, that beautiful oriental feel, which now, you know, you think about an oriental, it's warm, it's enveloping, it's cozy, but this is an 82 oriental. This was competing with Koros and Antaeus and Quorum, which is an absolute in-your-face beast, and Dracar Noir, which was, you know, a fresher take on things, but still, if you've smelled Dracar Noir, you know that it's no slouch. So, if you think about the world that it was, you know, living in, 
um, it had to compete. And the way it competed with was with depth. And so it had a little bit of that, you know, smokiness from the labdanum. That leathery labdanum uh, ended up coming in at the end. Um, it is, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's an amazing fragrance no one talks about anymore. Just like I put opium in my top 10 fragrances of all time. Um, and you don't see many people like me, many reviewers out there talking about how great women's opium from 1977 is. They've moved on to talking about Rojas and Zerzhoffs and, you know, all these other brands that uh, come in a box that comes inside of a box that comes inside of a box that you have to take it out and, the you know, the cap costs more than the entire juice inside the bottle. You know, I, I obviously I have some Rojas, I have some Amwages, um, and I have some Creeds, and, and I have some Frederick Malls and all that stuff, and I have the expensive fragrances, but I get just as much joy if not more, wearing stuff like this, you know, wearing stuff like this. So that's why I want to do these this year in perfumes, because, you know, th these should be talked about. This is an amazing composition. And for a lover of fragrance, for a student of fragrance, you know, if you want to go out there and smell something that's going to knock you out, uh, that's going to show you something different, S.A. Louder would never release this today. The other Estee Lauder that I've sung praises to the moon and back to are Azure. Estee Lauder would never release Azure today. They hide it underneath the counter, right? So that's why vintage lovers like myself, you know, will, will, will really fall in love with these compositions. Is it something different? It's something that, you know, they, they, they would not do nowadays. They wouldn't take this risk. If you like the orange glow that Lagerfeld Cologne has, check this out. Um, this has this this has this orange vibe that cuts down the middle to me. Um, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I need to wear this soon. That's the problem with the big collection is you you don't get to wear your favorites all the time. Um, I'm, I'm trying to make it a point to wear my favorites more and more, but this is for, you know, this is for a man that wants to stand on its own, who doesn't want to conform to the trends, who's not a trendsetter or not a trend follower, I should say. He is a trendsetter, um, and this can easily be worn in today's, you know, this, this, if this came out, if JHL came out a decade earlier, it would have been a women's perfume. Hands down. If this came out in the early 70s, this would not have been a men's perfume. It, it would have been a women's perfume. Um, and so it just goes to show kind of how the times have changed. And um, if, uh, if you can get your nose on this, if you can find the older bottle, do it. But I think the new bottle is still good. And also I hear Estee Lauder is potentially cutting that gentleman's collection or s selling it off. So if you're worried about reformulation or discontinuations, get yourself a bottle now. So I hope you've enjoyed this year in perfume from 82. Uh, this was a little bit of a shorter video, even though we're almost at the 30 minute mark. And uh, I probably rambled on about these three cents enough and my scent of the day. So let me know what your thoughts are on about these fragrance fragrances. See if I can find some words. And um, love seeing your faces, comment, below. Uh, and I guess if I'm going to be a real YouTuber, I'm supposed to say, give me a like and subscribe to my channel and all that good stuff. But um, I really enjoyed the conversations with you guys. So uh, if there's any fragrances from 82 that I'm missing, uh, or if you have any thoughts on these, let me know. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another fragrance video. Cheers.